with you some prophetic instructions that are very simple to follow, but they will tremendously bless you, your friends, and your family. But first, I need to share with you two passages of scripture. I'll begin first by reading from the book of Mark, chapter 11, and verse 22. And Yeshua answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, And shall not doubt in his heart, But shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. The second passage of scripture we are going to be reading from is in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. And for clarity, I'll read from the Christian Standard Bible. It says, now faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. What the word of God is teaching us here is that the things that you desire, that you call for, that you require, that you need, if you mingle those things with faith, believing that you have received them they shall be yours. With this powerful revelation in mind that came from the mouth of Yeshua and his apostles, I'm now going to give you a set of simple instructions that if you follow, I believe and expect that your life, the life of your friends and family will be changed. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to get a blank check, a check from your personal or your business account. And if you have neither of these, all you need to do is go onto Google and type in the name of your bank, blank check, and download an image and print it out. And once you have the blank check, the business or personal, from your account or one that you download print up from Google I want you to think of a figure I want you to think of what you can believe father to bless you with miraculously in the year 2024 now as I'm saying these words a figure may come to your mind right now maybe you need to pay off your mortgage is an amount that you need to pay off or there's debts that you need to clear maybe you already have been thinking about moving into investing buying property or starting a business whatever the case may be if you have a figure in mind then i want you to write it in the in the check that you've either printed or you've got if you don't have a figure in mind, this is an opportunity for, for you to prayfully consider what you are desiring to receive throughout the year 2024. Now that you have the blank check with the figure that you even need to clear off debts, mortgage, your car, invest in property, the stock market, cryptocurrency, or for you to just be comfortable and you've written that down. I now want you in the area where you have the lines for you to write. I want you to write this statement. I thank you, Father, because your son said, 
that whatsoever I desire, when I pray, believing that I receive, I shall have. I thank you, Father, because your Son said that whatsoever I desire, when I pray, believing that I receive, I shall have. Once you've written that down on the check, I want you to either tape it, paper clip it, blue tack it, glue it, whatever is your choice, into the front of your Bible. Obviously, I don't want you to cover any of the page pages where you read, but typically in most Bibles, there may be one or two pages that are left blank. Some may be for announcements or for you to make notes. But I want you to attach this check to the front of your Bible. And the reason I want you to do it is because when you open your Bible and you see the check and you see the amount that you've written down, I want you to rehearse the statement. I thank you, Father, because your son said that whatsoever I desire, when I pray, believing that I receive, I shall have. So you've completed the first process of writing the check. Remember, faith is the reality of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Messiah taught us that whatsoever we ask for, whatsoever we desire, whatsoever we require, what we need, if we believe that we receive them, we shall have those things. So the check at the front of your Bible is simply a means by which you can bring to remembrance that which you are expecting to materialize that you can recite these declarations of thanksgiving every time you see it every time it's in it, uh, you're reading your bible you can rehearse those things whatsoever you think whatsoever you imagine whatsoever you desire whatsoever you need if you believe you can receive them that's what the check is for to help us we shall have whatsoever we are asking for. The next part is to make a vow. The scriptural foundation for this can be found in Genesis 28 verse 20. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. So just as the patriarch Jacob vowed a vow, and in that vow he declared that whatsoever he received of the father, he would give a tenth. I encourage you right now, if you are willing to write the check, to put the amount, to make declarations and statements of thanksgiving, to also declare that if Father materializes throughout the course of the year, the very thing you desire, that you are willing to give back unto him, to, to, to show your trust, obedience unto him by giving him a tithe of that which he gave you. In Malachi 3.10 it reads, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith Jehovah of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out, pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough 
to receive it. If you follow these prophetic instructions, write out the amount, write the statement, put it at the front of your Bible, rehearse them, rehearse them, read them, give in thanks, and you make a vow to the Most High that if he fulfills that which you have asked, you will fulfill that which he has asked in his word. This is where, when that time comes, I want you to give. I'm believing that if you follow these instructions, that you write out the check, that you attach it in the big front of your Bible, if you read the statement of thanksgiving every time you open your Bible, in expectation that you are receiving that which you desire, if you make the vow that the things that you have desired, if you receive over the course of time, 2024 and beyond, of these instructions and what you are expecting to experience. I also want you, when it happens for you to pay the vow of the tithe, but also send me a testimony at Shalom at hoiuk.com that is shalom at hoiuk.com and finally if you are going to go on this journey with me below in the chat in the comment section write 2024 i am in write 2024 i'm in by god's grace I will see you, I will see your emails, I will see your testimonies, and I expect you to have a exceedingly, abundantly blessed 2024. Shalom. Greetings and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Greetings and Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I hope, brothers and sisters, you had an exceedingly and tremendously blessed Passover. An exceedingly and abundantly blessed Passover. And as we are in a feast, we are going to take our shofars. Get your shofar, get your shofar, and uh, your noisemaker, your trumpet, your vuvuzela, your timbrel, mm -hmm. and make a joyful noise with me. Again, it is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It's the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and I'm hoping, brothers and sisters, you had a tremendously blessed Passover um, last evening, and your Unleavened Bread has gone, um, gone according to God's will. Today, we are going to be looking into the past, present, an eschatological significant feast. That is the title of the of the service here today. So what I encourage you to do now, what I encourage you to do now is hit the share button. 
who is going to be the first to say I've shared? Who's going to be the first to say I've shared? There's plenty of places where you can share. You can share in on YouTube, you can share on Facebook, you can share on WhatsApp, you can share on TikTok. We are on all of those platforms. You can share on X, we are on X. You can share in WhatsApp groups that you are a part of. You can share all over the place. Let other people know we are live and you are going to be blessed by the word today. Who has shared? Who has shared? Who has shared? Who has shared? Type it in the, in the chat if you've shared and if you have liked. Blessings to you, Sister Julie, for sharing. Blessings to you, Jasmine, for sharing. The Brethren of House of Israel, TT. Blessings to you, Sheila. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm hoping that, that the people you share this message with will be encouraged and strengthened by the word today. So as you know, we have begun the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So we've begun the Feast of Unleavened Bread and therefore the day of the first fruits offering will be Saturday the 30th of March to Sunday the 31st of March. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, the seventh day, will begin Sunday 31st of March to Monday 1st of April. So our dedicated feast for the seventh day service will be on Monday the 1st of April at 1 p.m. So you are most welcome to join us for the dedicated feast service Monday at 1 p.m. It will be a pleasure to have you with us as we celebrate the feasts of the Most High. The vision of House of Israel UK. And before I continue, before I continue, let it be known I'm back in the UK, as I'm sure you can already, uh, you already know. So I'm back in the UK and I have had a tremendous time in the Caribbean. Um, and I'm sure you're going to be hearing about the things that took place and what the Most High did over the course of the next few weeks. But I'm back in the UK. I had a great time. Father was certainly with me and Father was certainly with the people. House of Israel, Trinidad and Tobago has been established. The brethren have been strengthened and they have been left, I believe, um, blessed, blessed, encouraged, strengthened, discipled, etc, etc. And as I say to people who I encounter for the first or for the second time, take advantage of your, your opportunity. The means by which I connected with this group of people halfway around the world is through turning up to Sabbath services online, saying Shabbat Shalom, we are from here, connecting with me via the WhatsApp group um, that I used to have, joining the academy, Bible studies, and forging a relationship, a relationship founded and based on the word, becoming a part of a community, a brotherhood. And then beyond that, Father placed it upon my heart to visit. And because of the relationship, it was a phone call. And this was last year. And then that relationship continued to develop and flourish. And as a consequence of this, now you now have a ministry in the Caribbean 
that teaches the true gospel of the kingdom without the traditions of men. The reason why I'm saying this to you, however, is because I want you to know that you have the self-same opportunities for fellowship, for discipleship, for the establishment of ministry and the establishment of community as they do. And all you need to do is replicate the things that they have done. Community, fellowship, discipleship, and therefore the natural progression from there. Once an individual has been transformed is to establish a means by which a community can be transformed also. So again, I am back and I'm looking forward to what Father is going to be doing um, across this land. The vision of House of Israel is to be a worshipping people, an evangelistic community, a discipleship centre, an equipping network and a worldwide witness for Yeshua the Messiah. And these are the declarations of Jehovah's blessings. I declare this is my season for peace, power, promises and prosperity. I declare the peace of Jehovah in my life and in my body. I declare the power of Jehovah to manifest fully in my life. I declare the promises of Jehovah fulfilled in my life. I declare the prosperity of Jehovah to permeate to every area of my life. And I declare I will walk in obedience to Jehovah every day of my life. I encourage you, brothers and sisters, as this is a feast, to share your testimonies below. If you have a testimony with regards to your feast, then let it be known. I know when I'm ministering on TikTok especially, I'm ministering to people who have never celebrated the feast before in their life and this is the first time. So if it has been your first time observing the feast of Passover of unleavened bread, then I want you to type it in the chat and let it be known what your experience was like. I know that following the Most High is a progressive experience. It's a progressive experience because as a father, the more you mature, the more you grow, the more is revealed, the more is shared. So what you learn and what you obtain from observing the feasts of Jehovah in year 10 is very different from what you've achieved and attained from observing the feasts of Jehovah in year 1 and 2. So the more you increasingly adhere to his word, the more you increasingly observe his commandments and his feasts, the more insight and revelation will open up unto you. And therefore, this is just the beginning. So share your, share your experiences, share your testimonies in the chat. I would love to hear how it all went for you. So we're going to begin reading from Psalm 81. In Psalm 81, it reads, Sing aloud unto God our strength. Make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. Take a psalm and bring hither the timbrel, the pleasant harp with the psaltery. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon. <laughs> Psalm 
in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. For this was a statue for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. So if you want to know why there is an individual on your screen blowing the trumpet, it's because, or the shofar, it's because it's in the Bible. It's because we find this in the Bible. We find it in the scriptures. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he went out through the land of Egypt, where I heard a, a language that I understood not. I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were delivered from the pots. The psalmist is taking us through a historical lesson here. He's saying, I've, the Most High gave us a reason to rejoice. The Most High gave us a reason to rejoice, to sing aloud, to make a joyful noise, to blow up the trumpet. And this is when we were instructed to do it. In a new moon, in a time appointed on our solemn feast day. In other words, brothers and sisters, the Most High, according to the psalmist, is indicating to the people, I want you to remember. Every month, I want you to remember. Every new moon, I want you to remember. Every solemn feast day, I want you to remember. At the appointed times, I want you to remember how I delivered your hands from, from the burden. So he's giving the Most High is providing Israel a reason to rejoice. And that reason is to rejoice is motivated by the past memorial it carries on in verse 6 i removed his shoulder from the burden his hands were delivered from the pots thou callest in trouble and i delivered thee i answered thee in the secret place of thunder this is psalm 81 verse 7 I prove thee at the waters of Meribah, Selah. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt, wilt hearken unto me. There shall be no strange God in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. So the, Mo the Most High begins by giving the children of Israel a history lesson as to the reasons why they are blowing the trumpet, they are making a joyful noise, they are singing aloud with, a, a, with mirth and great song. But then he says, and he indicates to the people but there's a standard that I also require in the present. This is the reason why you rejoice because of the past. But in the present, here's the standard. If you therefore adhere to the standard, all you have to do when your mouth is empty is open it wide. See, the Most High, according to scripture, has already demonstrate, demonstrated he has the capacity, the capability and the willingness to deliver his people. He has the capacity and the willingness to deliver his people. He's done so in the past. In the present, if 
you adhere to the standard, you won't need deliverance. But when you do need provisions, all you have to do is let it be known. So he said, I have ordained this in Egypt. There shall be no strange God in thee. Neither thou shalt thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice and Israel would none of me. The people wouldn't listen. The Most High indicates to the people, this is what I've done in times past, so rejoice. The reason why your, your, your fathers and your, your ancestors would make a joyful noise during the feasts, would blow the shofar, is because what I did in times past. This is what you have to do in the present. There shall be no strange God in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. But my people would not hearken to my voice. So the people in the present... Though they were joy rejoicing pertaining to the past, would not listen. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lusts, and they walked in their own counsels. This is verse 12 of Psalm 81. Oh, that my people would hearken unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies, and turn my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto them, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of wheat and with honey out of the rock, should I have satisfied thee. Unleavened bread as a memorial brings us back into a remembrance of an exodus from the household of bondage eventually unto a land that flowed with milk and honey by the creator of heaven and earth because of a covenant he made with a man called abraham yet it is with this historical memorialization that a present and future message is hidden which if he did best prepares the observer for present and future promises. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that a lot of the times when it comes down to the feasts of the Lord, the focus people may have and can have is that the feasts of the Most High has a lot to do with that which has happened already. So when we're speaking about the Feast of Unleavened Bread, focus is put upon unleavened bread with regards to Egypt. However, there is a significance with regards to unleavened bread pertaining to you and I. Not just pertaining to you and I in this moment, but also more importantly in the moments that are to come. The significance of this statement for you and I should be if therefore, I'm going to show you this in scripture. If therefore, I don't honor God's commands to keep the feasts. And I am told there's a significance with regards to keeping God's commandments in your present. Your present, in my present, as well as in a future that is to come. Then what we can do, brothers and sisters, is through our ignorance, 
and through our disobedience bring unto us condemnation. Are you hearing me? Are there people with me today? If you're with me, if you're following, if you're hearing, put, I'm hearing you in the chat. Type, I'm hearing you in the chat, if you're hearing me. Thank you for following. Turn your Bibles now. And I'm glad you're hearing. Turn your Bibles now to Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 16. Jeremiah chapter 16. And again, in the chat, type your testimonies with regards to unleavened bread, how it was for you for this year. If it was your first time, um, as I would love to, as I, as I would love to know, Jeremiah chapter sixteen, verse fourteen. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall be no more; it shall no more be said, Jehovah liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But Jehovah liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from the land whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land and give unto their, their land that I gave unto their fathers. So check this, brothers and sisters. If we go into the Torah, we know Moses led the people out of Egypt. If we consider the Psalm that we read, Psalm 81, the Psalmist said, Father delivered their hands from the burden. However, if we check the prophet, The prophet is ultimately saying there is a time which is yet to come to pass when there are a people who will be driven again into captivity that father will once again draw from captivity and place in their own land. The prophets so describe this exodus that we are told that people will no longer speak about when father drew the children of Israel out of Egypt anymore. But when father drew the children of Egypt, Israel, according to uh, 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 Jeremiah 16, from the north, the south, the east, and the west. What that should say to you is that though we were told to remember, though the Most High gave us commandments pertaining to the months, pertaining to the appointed time and solemn feast days, to cause his people to remember that they were once captive and father delivered them. And also that he had specifications for them to maintain their deliverance. They had forgotten. And as a consequence of this, the prophets are revealing a secondary exodus is necessary. A secondary exodus is necessary. 
a secondary deliverance from the household of bondage is necessary if we are looking at scripture this is where the significance of keeping God's word comes into play this is where adhering to God's word and discerning the significance of the feast of unleavened bread especially comes into play but let's continue Understanding and observing the, memo the memorial of Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread is necessary as without doing so, the mistakes that caused Israel to require another exodus won't be learned. Future and present promises are tied to learning from past mistakes. It's for this cause Israel, both physically and and spiritually require liberation from captivity in the present and in a time yet to come. Turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. First Corinthians chapter 5. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Messiah our Passover is sacrifice for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth when you begin to look at this feast through the le through the lens of the writings of the new testament portion of the bible the new covenant you begin to see that The Passover and unleavened bread has some significance beyond the natural. There is significance pertaining to this feast beyond the natural of eating bread. Therefore, if you are an adherer to the religion that tells you you don't need to keep this feast, then not only are you doing the same thing Father said not to do to keep you out of captivity, but you're also taking away the ability to remind you of the captivity in the natural but doing away with the spiritual reminder that you came from a place where you were captive you came from a place where you were bound and Messiah, our Passover, was sacrificed for us so that you be that so that you can be made free. As you know, this message is lost when you are teaching people about Easter. And you have children running around the garden looking for chocolate eggs, for example. One can ask, 
what does the chocolate egg have to do with scripture? But when you look at the the connotations embedded into the feast of unleavened bread, you will see that what it actually does is it removes the memorial. It removes the memorial that's purpose is to help you remember. I don't want to go into captivity. There's another captivity coming, you know. I don't want to be I don't want to go back into captivity. But not only there's another captivity coming and I don't want to go into that captivity, but also Messiah is our Passover. He is sacrificed for us. So what does that mean? What that means, if, I, if I'm an observer of God's word, is it that means I need to leave captivity as soon as I accept Yeshua as my Passover sacrifice. I need to come out of captivity quickly. What captivity is being referred to in the New Testament portion of the Bible? Servitude to sin. When it speaks about he who the sun sets free is free indeed, who is the one that's keeping the people bound? Sin. But when you remove the feasts and the memorial, you are actually promoting sinful behavior. You're promoting sinful behavior. Because as it is written, sin is a violation of the law. The feast wants to remind you, the purpose of the new moon wants to remind you, you were once slaves. God set you free. He wants to bless you. He wants to prosper you. But you didn't listen to his word. The church therefore comes along and says, you know what? You need to do away with those memorials. That's the Old Testament. That's the Old Covenant. That's for the Jews. Here are some new, here are some new holy days that you can't find in the Bible. But instead of memorializing the Most High and causing the people to remember his word, they're memorializing the strange God that God told you not to, not to bring before him. Am I speaking the truth? I'm speaking the truth. People on TikTok, if you're new here, follow this page. You're going to get the truth. That goes for Facebook. That goes for YouTube. If you're new here, follow this page. You're going to get the unfiltered, unadulterated truth that sets men free. Father says, don't bring me. Don't, bring, don't worship a strange God. Don't bring them before me. Here you have the God Freya on Good Friday. Or Good, Fre Good Freya's Day. Here you have Osiris, Eosta on Easter. But reject Pesach. Reject the Passover. The very feast Messiah himself kept. His disciples.
Throughout scripture, both in the Old and New Testament, unleavened bread and the Passover are referenced with historical, contemporary and eschatological significance. We were all born in a type of Egypt. So we have the historical perspective. The historical perspective, which is what we, what we, when we're at the table, eating the Passover or eating what we declare to be a Passover meal, we can't actually eat the Passover because the Passover, according to the Torah, is a sacrifice and we're not sacrificing anything. We're memorializing because the Passover that they used to eat, which they sacrificed, we who are believers in Messiah believe he was sacrificed for our sins. So we're not eating Messiah and we're not eating a sacrifice in accordance to the old covenant. We're memorializing. But in addition to the memorialization, there's a contemporary element. What's the contemporary element? I need to make sure I don't have leaven in me. Now, Paul speaks about the leaven of malice and wickedness. Messiah speaks about the, ma the, the leaven of doctrine. Forty doctrine. So just as in times past, the new moon, the appointed time, the feast day were memorials in, in times present, it's a memorial. What for? I need to check myself. I need to check myself. I need to make sure I'm in good standing with God. I need to purge out this leaven. I need to make sure there is no erroneous doctrine in me. And though we're, give, though we're being given this memorial to tell us to purge out the old leaven, malice, wickedness, faulty doctrine, if there is ever a time where leaven comes in and faulty doctrine comes in, this is the time. Every year without fail, for as long as I've been as I've been walking this walk, there's confusion, there's contention and strife. Not about the word. If you just stand on the word, there's, how can there be confusion? God is not the author of confusion. It says it right here. It says it right there. What's there to be confused about? It's the leaven. The leaven causes the people to be confused. The leaven causes the people to be divided amongst themselves. For every man to go to his own tent. To be separate one from another. The leaven. So we're told to use this season to help us to be unleavened. But increasingly, this season promotes leaven. Or the carnality of the people use this season to promote the leaven. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Let's carry on. Let's carry on. Throughout scripture, both in the Old and New Testament, unleavened bread and the Passover are referenced with historical, contemporary and eschatological significance. We were all born in a type of Egypt. When the feast are blanket disannulled or replaced, that which one was commanded to remember and therefore learn from is replaced with a figment that's useless. 
in admonishing the hearer and reader about physical and spiritual captivity the word warned them of. In terms of truth, the observ observation of Easter, if the word sets us free, continue in my word and you'll be a disciple indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. If the truth makes you free, what does a fiction do? Answer that in the comments. If the truth makes you free, what does a fiction do? A fiction Binds you up by the one who sowed the fiction. Because now. Due to this fiction. That you can't see. Because you can't see it written plainly. You now have to trust on someone's revelation. So you become bound. By someone's erroneous revelation. When Messiah has given us the truth for freedom. That's why he told his disciples. You know what you need to do? You need to beware of the leaven. They thought he was talking about bread. And we're going to come to this passage soon. They thought he was talking about bread. But what he was actually talking about is the doctrine. They didn't need to worry about bread. Messiah can, 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 can materialize bread. What they needed to worry about, brothers and sisters... Is about doctrine. Let's carry on. In Deuteronomy chapter 16. Verse 1. In Deuteronomy chapter 16. Verse 1. Observe the month Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God of the flock of the herd in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith. Even the bread of affliction. For thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste. That thou mayest remember the day. When, the, when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt. All the days of thy life. The Most High is saying to the children of Israel. Every year. I want you to, ob to observe the month Abib. And I want you to keep the Passover. Now, for those of you who don't know, Abib, if you do a Hebrew Strong's Concordance search and some investigation, Abib is the condition of a barley crop. The Most High is saying, I want you to observe the month of the, Abib, of the Abib. I want you to guard it. That's what this word observe is in the Hebrew. That's what it's speaking about. Guard. I want you to look over. I want you to protect this month. Why does he want you to guard it? 
Because if you don't guard the month, then you can't keep the Passover. And the Passover is the, it, it, year after year, is the memorial. Don't go back into slavery. Don't go back into bondage. Don't forget my commandments. Don't forget my word. Remember, remember, remember. How do you remember? Guard the month of the Abib. Guard it. Look out for the Aviv Bali. Keep the Passover. Why? First one. For in the month of the Abib, the Lord brought thee forth out of, the, out of Egypt by night. Why did you keep it? Because that's the month when they came out of Egypt by night. Carries on. By saying to us, During this time you shall eat unleavened bread, even the bread of affliction. For thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste. The reason why you eat, they ate the bread of affliction, why you should eat the bread of affliction, unleavened bread, is because they came out of Egypt by night. Do you know what? What this says to me, had the Most High not commanded them to, they may have stayed a little longer in order to prepare. We've been given the signal that we are free. Let us spend a few days to prepare our food for the, for the journey. Are you with me? The bread of affliction that you and I are supposed to eat during the unleavened bread for seven days. They were eating. Shalom, shalom to you. They were eating because they came out in haste. I don't know about you. I'll speak for myself. 51 weeks out of the year, I have little to no interest in eating the bread of affliction. <laughs> I don't choose to eat the bread of affliction, you know. Who's with me? I don't purposefully choose to eat the bread of affliction i'm not going out there buying matzah for 51 weeks out of the year i'm not out there rolling the flour and the water and the salt for 51 weeks out of the year i don't do that why? Because my natural inclination is leaven. Uh. Who's with me? Do you understand what I'm what I'm what I'm saying here? My natural inclination, your natural inclination, is leaven. You literally, week after week, have no interest. You you won't even know. You're not looking for the matzah. You're not looking for the, for, for the, you're going straight to the leavened bread. These individuals 
had it not been a commandment from the Most High, because of how leavened bread is made, would have said, we don't have bread. Let us stay a while for our dough to raise. Because you and I, when we want to make leavened bread, we might get yeast in a tin. These individuals didn't have tinned yeast. What they had is this naturally occurring leaven in the air. Which is how you make sourdough bread. This process of making the bread with the natural occurring leaven takes a process of days. The Most High didn't want them to remain there for days. He wanted them to, re to leave immediately. So he gave them the instruction, you leave right now, you will eat unleavened bread. Why is this important for you and I? It's important for you and I, not just for the historical remembrance of unleavened bread, but very presently, your natural inclination, brothers and sisters, is to sin. Your natural inclination, brothers and sisters, is to have itching ears. The moment someone may say, come up with this new revelation, your heart is moved. Oh, that's deep. That is deep, brother. Where you get that from? That's deep. That's powerful. This brother is spiritual. You pour unto yourself teachers having itching ears. Who satisfy the lust of your own flesh with their words. Because your natural inclination is leaven. <laughs> Have you ever noticed, you would have noticed this. If you go tonight, just put this to the test. If you've noticed this, I want you to put me in the chat. You open your, in bed tonight, you open your Bible. You open your Bible, right? You start reading in your head. In the Bible within seconds you're you're falling asleep you're nodding off at, within seconds of reading the Bible put 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 me in the chat if 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 this happens to you if you have a phone in your hand however if you have a phone in your hand, though you may be tired, your inclination in the natural is I'm awake. You can stroll, you can stroll TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram till your eyeballs bleed. But when it comes down to the word, you're drifting asleep. That's because your natural inclination is leaven. When it comes down to the truth. People can become quick to abandon the truth giver. Cast stones at the truth giver. Find reasons to be offended at the truth giver. 
so they can move away from the truth. But when it comes down to lies, deception and deceit, the self-same people who, 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 who moonwalk from the truth will sit, sit in the pew for decades. How long these people been in the church? How long these people been in the church receiving nothing? They come to the truth. They're looking for reasons to exit the building quickly. That's because the natural inclination of man is to is is leaven. Where's the leaven at? <laughs> Where's the new revelation? After new revelation, they haven't even <laughs> they haven't held on to the old revelation. <laughs> ah, but I'm speaking the truth. It's the it, it, it's the truth. I'm not lying to you. Unleavened bread is the bread of affliction. Your natural inclination, therefore, is to avoid it. I eat bread almost every day. I eat unleavened bread in the main for seven days a year. Unleavened bread is to remind you that Israel left Egypt in haste. Your natural inclination will choose the comfort and certainty of bondage over the uncertainty and discomfort of freedom. That may sound strange, but it's true. People will choose comfort and certain certainty of bondage. They're, I'm familiar with this bondage. How do I know it's true? Because in the main, when Israel was told... They can leave Babylon. They could leave Persia and go back. The majority of them wanted to stay. The majority. Shalom to you pastor. The majority. Of the people. Who were told. You can leave Persia now and go back to your own land. Wanted to stay. What that says to me, what that should say to you is that people prefer the, un the certainty of captivity. The, predictable, the predictability of bondage rather than the bread of affliction. Rather than stepping into a world where you are dependent on the Most High for your next source of manna. So what do they do? They go back to where they came from. I can't tell you how many people came out of the church into truth and went straight back into the church. They didn't want to eat the bread of, bread of affliction. It's afflicting my teeth. It's too crunchy. So they go back. Unleavened bread is the bread of affliction. Your natural inclination will choose the comfort and certainty of bondage over the uncertainty and discomfort of freedom. The observation of the feast is to remind us not to assimilate physically and spiritually. Father wanted the children of Israel to leave in haste. 
He didn't want them to stay. I have shared with people a means by which I have been delivered from things that kept me bound in times gone past. And I've done this a number of times with people. Especially with regards to addiction to pornography. So I've spoken to many men. Many men. Who have come to me. And have shared with me. You know Marcus I can't break free from this thing. I can't break free from it. I have shared with them how I became freed from this addiction. I will share with you. There was one night where I made the declaration by faith. I will never do that again. I will never watch things like that again. And like that, by faith, I was free. I believe there are afflictions that people who watch this broadcast, this stream, and they are allowing themselves to linger. Father says you can leave right now, you know. I want you to leave right now. You are saying, well, you know, if I if I leave now, what am I going to do about tomorrow? I can't leave right now because it will be too difficult for me to leave. I need to think I could, I'll leave after I've settled this problem. After I've addressed this issue with me leaving. Father says, I, look, I want you to leave right now. When you head into the wilderness, I'm going to provide for you. So even though you don't have bread, when you get to the wilderness, I'm going to give you bread from heaven. This is divine bread now. Not that, that, uh, not that, 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 that terrible bread, Egyptian bread. I'm going to give you heaven's bread. Someone saying I battled it for 27 years. Listen to me. When you choose to remain captive because you can't see how being free is better for you. Or you can't see how leaving your current Pharaoh situation can give you a, 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 the security or the comfort you're looking for. What you are doing is you're removing the possibility of you receiving a divine upgrade. A divine upgrade. These young people. Who have been addicted to pornography. Addicted to drugs. Addicted to smoking. Addicted to alcohol. Addicted to all of these things. Have disqualified themselves. By not saying I will never do this again in my life. And pressing through. They've disqualified themselves from the upgrade. Which may be. A divine woman sent by the Most High. Why would the Most High send to you. A wife. A woman after his own heart. If you don't even know how to love yourself properly. How you got to love one of his children. 
disqualifying yourself from the capacity to have a satisfaction within yourself because you're seeking satisfaction on temporary carnal things. So I made the decision. That's the last time I'm doing this. I ain't doing that anymore. Done. Finished. The devil is can be in your head. But what, what, what's going to happen when you're in this situation? If you're not drinking anymore, what's going to happen when you get the craving? What's going to happen when your friends call you? If you're not smoking anymore, what's your friends going to think? What happens at work when everyone takes that cigarette break and you and you declare to your friends, to your colleagues, I'm not taking a cigarette break anymore. I don't smoke. What are you going to do when you have that craving? Not realizing that by making the declaration, I'm leaving right now. I'm not coming back. That father has something greater in store for you. Put the Egyptian bread behind. There's bread from heaven. Exodus 16 verse 1 Exodus 16 verse 1 And they took their journey from Elim And all the congregation of the children of Israel Came unto the wilderness of Sin Which is between Elim and Sinai On the 15th day of the second month After they departing out of the land of Egypt And the whole congregation of the children of Israel Murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness And the children of Israel said unto them would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, where we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. John 12 verse 5. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear that was put therein. This is speaking about Judas. Matthew chapter 26 verse 15. And he said unto them, what will you give me? And I will deliver him in unto you. And they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. Judas was looking back. The back he was looking at was being a thief. He was with the divine redeemer. He was with the son who sets men free. But he didn't. His natural inclination wasn't freedom. It was the silver. It was the stuff in the bag. And he didn't mortify that, that natural inclination. So when opportunity arose, he seized it. And hear this. He ended up dead. Let me ask you a question and I want your answers in the chat. Just type your answers in the chat. Type your answers in the chat. If I was to give you right now, I could put in your bank account right now. 10 million pounds, 10 million US dollars, but 
I said, you will not wake up tomorrow morning. Your option is $10 million, but you won't wake up tomorrow morning. Would you take the $10 million? Answers in the chat. Would you take the 10 million pound? So in the chat, the answer is no. If I said to you, you can have $20 million But in a week's time You won't wake up in the morning Would you take it? You can put still no 20 million You don't wake up in a week You've got one week left Yes or still no So I can st say, people are saying, still no. <laughs> Hear this now. I speak the truth. Some of you are selling your eternal life for less money than what I just spoke there. You have the opportunity to have eternal life. Eternal life. But with the eternal life comes the pursuit of God. The pursuit of God and his kingdom. Leaving Egypt quickly. Now. If I stay in Egypt, I'm going to lose my life. If I don't put the blood of the lamb on my doorpost, someone is going to perish in my household. Death will come and visit our household. And yet, there are individuals... Who won't go the route of eternal life. Pursue the most high. Holy. Will take the deal. For less money. The discomfort of hunger caused the people to desire the provisions of their captivity. In much the same way, Judas, who followed the divine redeemer, capitulated to the lust of his flesh for mammon. Unleavened bread points to the expeditious deliverance from both physical and spiritual bondage in the past, present and future. Through the death of Messiah on our behalf, those previously bound by sin should be free. Yet just as with Egypt, their capture, captors seek to rebind its former bond servants. I'm going to go through a few more scriptures and then we're finished. Matthew 6.16 6, This is a means by which the former captor which you have been freed from through Messiah Yeshua rebinds you. 
Then Yeshua said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reason among themselves, saying, It is better, it is because we've taken no bread. Which when Yeshua perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves because you have bought no bread? Do you not understand? Neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand and how many baskets ye took up. Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand and how many baskets ye took up. How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them not to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The greatest means by which brothers and sisters, people can be bound to sin and therefore because of sin, go into a physical and spiritual captivity is through faulty doctrine. False teaching, reprobate and corrupt mindset The religious establishment The worst offender in keeping people bound physically and spiritually is the religious establishment And free people from them who seek to establish their own I'll show you this in scripture Revelation, doctrine, rites, customs and traditions Disannulling the word, which ultimately turns the people back to their former captor, sin. The Pharisees and Sadducees today are Torah teachers, rabbis, pastors, and those claiming to be led by the Spirit, all the while having no foundation on the word and no evidence of being called by God. I want you to hear me. We are told in scripture not to believe every spirit. Are we not? We're told in scripture not to believe every spirit, but test the spirit. You put the spirit to the test. Why did you put the spirit to the test? Because if the sun sets you free through the continuation of the word, those opposed to the sun will seek to rebind you through a corruption of his word. That's why scripture reveals the devil masquerades as an angel of light. Because if he tells you, good afternoon, is Satan here? Can I, can I come in? No, I'm, no. I have no business. I have no business allowing you to come, come in my house. I don't want the devil in my house. That's wickedness. But if he comes... Praise the Lord. I <laughs> Praise the Lord. I had a vision last night. Let me tell you what God showed to me. Bring, bring. You won't believe the revelation I just had. The Holy Spirit showed me this. Or you yourself have a eureka moment. The devil masquerades as an angel of light. The means by which 
the devil can bind you up is through leaven. The leaven of malice and iniquity, which is why in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, he tells you, purge it out. You need to purge that out. Get that out of the, of the mixture. But in addition to malice and iniquity, there's doctrine. And people can point their finger at the doctrine of Christianity while at the same time being leavened through their own doctrine. So whenever I hear, and I've, I, 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 whenever I hear something, most of the time, I know 100% ain't in the Bible. What reference are you referring to? What passage of scripture are you referring to? What reference are you referring to? Where is that in the Bible? Anyone who tells me Gabriel came to me last night and gave me this. Where is that in the Bible? Where is that in the word of God? I had a dream. I had a vision. Where is that in the Bible? Where is that in the word of God? I'm going to show you where. Turn your Bibles to Galatians chapter 1. Go to Galatians chapter 1 for me, please. Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Messiah unto another gospel. Paul himself was dealing with mess. People who he established in the faith was subscribing to another message. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Messiah. Now watch this. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that we have preached unto you let him be accursed as we said before so say i now again if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received let him be accursed If the word of God today is the word of God yesterday and the word of God tomorrow, if any man preach, if any woman preach, if an angel of heaven preach, that which you can't find in scripture According to the doctrine of Paul, let him be accursed. So I asked the question, where is that? In, what, what are you referring to? What passage are you referring to? Where can I find that in the Bible? Because if no, no prophecy, no scripture is of private interpretation I should see some witnesses what does this have to do with unleavened bread it has everything to do with unleavened bread because the most high made them eat the bread of affliction because he wanted them to leave in haste. 
if you're addicted to pornography, stop right now. If you're addicted to fornication, stop right now. If you're an adulterer, stop right now. An idolater, stop right now. Don't wait. Don't wait. To ease yourself out. No, you're going to have to suffer. To come out of this one. You're going to have to do that which is written. Which is mortify the deeds of your flesh. You're going to have to die to self. Messiah didn't want to die. But he said, it isn't my will. But the will of the Father. You have proclaimed through your faith that you are putting on Messiah. So when you come to this understanding and when you come to this revelation, don't linger in sin. Don't hang around the devil, you know. Do like Joseph did when he when he when temptation of adultery and fornication came, he ran from the temptation. In doing so, he kept himself pure, run away, flee, don't hang around. If you are in a relationship and you know you shouldn't be in this relationship. Why are you waiting? What are you waiting for? People are waiting for God to open the heavens. And for his lips to speak down from his throne. To them directly. When the word's already written. If you're angry without a cause, if you're bitter, if you're wrathful, if you're jealous, if you're covetous, if you're an idolater, if you're a blasphemer, if you have hate against your brother or sister, if you are in darkness in any way, shape or form, don't hang around and don't wait. Because if you wait, You may assimilate. And instead of being an Israelite who is free. You get naturalized into Egypt. Now you've got no conviction. That which the Holy Spirit used to convict you of. You don't get convicted of anymore. For grieving the spirit of God one too many times. So in conclusion. Beware of your own natural inclination. To sin. Beware of your own natural inclination to be tickled by faulty doctrine. And at the moment you recognize that this is what is happening in you, leave straight away. Leave straight away. Don't hang around the Egyptians. Don't hang around the devil. Don't hang around liars, manipulators. Don't hang around people who will conform you to the image of the devil rather than the image of the Most High. Leave very quickly. 
if I have spoken to you particularly today, I would like to pray for you. If there's anyone who needs to be broken free, write your name in the chat. If there's anyone who needs to be broken free, who needs to make that decision and needs to have prayer for that decision, I no longer want to be bound by X, Y, and Z. I want to be free. Write your name in the chat. What is binding you? And I will pray. And by God's grace, you'll be made free today. Hallelujah. Don't miss your opportunity. So you write your name in the chat. I'll pray with you. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, God of all creation, I bless your name. Thank you, Father, for this day, a day that you have made. A day where we are reminded of freedom. What you did for the children of Israel. But it's also a day, Father, where we are reminded not to return through our disobedience back to captivity. Father, you have put in your word and you've made it so that as the children of Israel were passed over by death because of the blood of the lamb we too have the ability or the opportunity to acquire eternal life through the blood of Yeshua so I pray Lord God that no one today will be fearful in applying that blood. That no one today will be afraid. And that all will leave, though maybe uncomfortable, uncertain. But all will be willing to leave because of their faith and trust in the Most High. I ask that you bless your people. Continue to open their eyes. And I pray, Father, for Oscar. Who is in jail. Bound by drugs. Lord of hosts, I pray in the name of Yeshua that though he's in jail, you reach him before it's too late for him. On behalf of his mother, that you send forth an angel, a minister of your word, to speak him, speaking to him so he comes out of this addiction and chooses life over death. Give him a, de a desire in his heart for change and transformation. 
In the name of Yeshua. Amen. What is your name? There's a, a request. I no longer want to be bound by insomnia and sexual tension, dreams and attacks. What is your name? And again, for all others, this is your opportunity for prayer. Put your name in the chat and I'll pray with you. While I'm waiting for the name, what's the big hoopla regarding April 8th eclipse? Whatever the hoopla is, it's unbiblical. People will try and go to a passage of scripture to find something in the Bible to validate um, their zeal, but it's unbiblical. And there's a hoopla. There's a hoopla or there is some kind of commotion every year around about this time. I would say stick to, stick to the word. Stick to the correct interpretation of the word. And you won't get pulled into the, to the hoopla, to the hype. So when you ask what's the big hoopla regarding if it ain't in the word it don't make sense to me I'm going to pray for you Deborah or Deborah Deborah I want you to put your hand rest your hand on your head I'm going to pray for you now regarding insomnia then I want you to go to bed and sleep <laughs> Father I pray for Deborah I pray for Deborah who has an issue with insomnia. An issue with insomnia. She can't sleep. And in your word you have said that you give rest to your beloved. There is an issue with regards to sexual tension dreams and attack father you know the cause of this situation that Deborah is experiencing how she is having encounters with demons in the night father I pray right now that you will shine your light upon this situation You know, as well as I do, that the children of God, I pray that there is an exposing right now of where the hedge of protection is open. I pray, Lord God, in the name of Yeshua, that you, Lord, will cause Deborah to sleep well tonight that you for, that you will forgive her of her sins that you'll forgive her of her sins renouncing the ills of her past 
and even conf to confess the present also. I pray, Lord God, that today for Deborah is a day of transformation. That you will be magnified and glorified through it all. In the name of Yeshua, I come against the spirit of insomnia. I come against spirits of sexual pleasures. And pray, Father, from this day forward. That Deborah will be made free. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Deborah, are you a believer in Yeshua? Are you a follower of Messiah? Just type it in the chat. Are you a follower of Messiah? How long have you been a follower of Messiah? How long have you been a follower of Messiah? If you know. in truth for about two years I asked this question and I don't know why but as I'm praying for you as I'm praying for you I'm hearing idolatry and witchcraft I'm hearing idolatry and witchcraft I, again, I don't know why I'm hearing idolatry and witchcraft. I'm also hearing your grandfather. I haven't heard, I don't know much beyond that at this point. But that's what I'm hearing as I'm praying for you. Let me know if any of that resonates Because if it does There may be some things There may be some things that You have to renounce You have to renounce There may be some things You have to remove From your property Things you have to renounce Things you have to remove from your property Maybe even repent from Currently, so consider what I have said because I'm believing that by faith, I'm believing you will have tremendous rest while at the same time. Yes, it resonates. Tell me more. I'm believing that you can have tremendous rest. 
But with regards to those three things, idolatry, witchcraft, something to do with your grandfather, I don't know, but I'm certain you know. I'm certain you know. If you address the areas pertaining to those things, what you do is you seal up the door. The adversary of your soul has to enter. Because at this point in time, it's not sealed. So pray about these things. Pray about these things. Ask the Holy Spirit about these things. Let me know in the chat how it resonates so I can give you further counsel. Let me go back up. Since the Passover and memorial and not the sacrifice, does it still hold that the uncircumcised should not eat it and that there are, should be no leftovers? The Passover in Egypt was is different from the Passover in the wilderness, right? So the second Passover, one the one that took place in Egypt, for example, they weren't fully dressed. They didn't have a staff in their hand, etc. So what we see there is that there's a transition from the first Passover where they actually left to the Passovers that followed. Then you move into the new covenant where Messiah is our Passover. So now... By observing Passover, you're not actually sacrificing. You're not killing the goat. You're not sacrificing. You're just eating to remember, to memorialize and honor God's command. So can an uncircumcised person eat? Yes, they can. Why? Because in Egypt, the Passover was connected to freedom. In Messiah, the Passover, our lamb, is connected to salvation. And you don't need to be circumcised to experience salvation. If you want to experience salvation, you need to have faith in Messiah. When you have faith in Messiah, it is then that you will keep God's instructions pertaining to circumcision. But you don't need to be circumcised to experience salvation. So with that being said, an uncircumcised individual, if they want to honor God's command, with regards to the Passover, they can honor God's command. However, if you want to honor God's command with regards to the Passover, I would suggest you also honor God's command with regards to circumcision because it's part of the same Torah. The same God who spoke to the children of Israel with regards to the Passover spoke to the children of Israel with regards to um, circumcision. I hope that helps. Mm -hmm. 
since I've been coming late, I want to see from the beginning to see what I might need, pr need prayers on. I'm doing a lot of dying to self, but I know. Glory to the King. I can attest to drawing a line in the sand and saying I will never look at pornography again works. It's not just men that are bound in this filth. I, I did too. I was too bound in that darkness. And father delivered me that was january 2008 and i never looked back hallelujah well glory to the king thank you for your transparency and thank you for your testimony hallelujah all right well it looks like we've come to the end of our time, uh, our teaching, and we've come to the end of our discussion, uh, prayer, comments, etc., etc. idolatry i've had idols of everything witchcraft i was introduced and presented into witchcraft and put into a position of a ritual ceremony by a witch doctor and i don't know about my grandfather yeah i would yeah you may not know the holy spirit knows what i would suggest you do I'm going to lead you in a prayer. In fact, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Then we're going to conclude. Because the Holy, the Holy Spirit wants you to be free. The Holy Spirit wants you to be free, Deborah. But this issue with regards to idolatry, this issue with regards to witchcraft needs to be broken. And whatever the issue with regards to your grandfather needs to be broken. That appears to be the reason why you are bound. But by God's grace we'll break that right now in the name of Yeshua. So just um, Deborah I want you to repeat after me. So just repeat after me. Everlasting Father, merciful God, and creator of heaven and earth, I submit myself before your judgment today and ask for your forgiveness. I know I'm not worthy and there is nothing I can do to make this demand but it's according to your own grace and your love towards me that compelled you to send your son I pray because of faith in Yeshua and his sacrifice his shed blood I pray for grace And mercy so that I can be forgiven of the sins regarding idolatry the sins regarding witchcraft And anything to do with my grandfather. 
my father, my mother, back to the Garden of Eden. I pray that every door I have opened to the devil is shut right now. I pray that every chain I've attached myself to Satan and his kingdom of darkness is broken right now. I pray all the powers attached to the idols, every attachment the witch doctor made between me and evil spirits. Merciful Father, Free me from today. I renounce the words of the witch doctor. I renounce the words of my grandfather. My father, my mother. And I speak on my behalf today. that I belong to you. I divorce myself from any idol. I divorce myself from any spiritual wickedness and declare myself to be the bride of Yeshua. Free me now from insomnia. Free me now from evil thoughts and dreams. Change the atmosphere in my home. Cast out every spiritual wickedness. And send forth your angels to speak to me instead of the devil. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. So Deborah, I'm believing for you, I'm believing for you, let me know what you felt as I was praying for you, let me know what you felt as I was praying for you. Couldn't we be put them in danger, allowing them to do Passover uncircumcised? I see what you're saying though, but there's consequences for observing it uncircumcised. It's impossible to observe Passover. I felt things coming out, glory to the King. Yes, there will be a coming out. For you, this is deliverance. You have, in your ignorance, Deborah, you've given place to the devil. In your ignorance, Deborah, you have allowed spirits, unclean spirits. You've you've hosted them through your idolatry. 
and through witchcraft in times gone past. But today is a day of liberation. Today is a day of deliverance and healing. What you therefore need to do is remove every idol from your property. Whether you have them there anymore, well, you may still have some idols, remove them from your property. Anything pertaining to um, witchcraft, even if you think it's innocent or it's no big deal, remove it from your property. If possible, I would suggest you burn it. You take it out back, put it in a tin bin and you burn it. Idol, witchcraft, gem, crystal, books, all of that stuff you burn. You renounce your involvement, you renounce your activity, and you will see how, how think you've just you've already said things are changing. Spirits are leaving you. You felt them coming back. You will see you'll have a a more uh, your your life will be changed from today. Amen. So going back to the question about you can't keep on uh, Passover. We are observing the Passover. We're not keeping it. If we were to keep the Passover, we'll be in violation of the new covenant. The new covenant, the sacrifice is already made once and for all. The new covenant. There's no more sacrifices for sin. And though Passover isn't a sin sacrifice in the Old Testament. Messiah, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. So we don't keep uh, Passover in the sense of the Torah. But what we are doing is keeping the feast day. So just as they did in the wilderness, they would sit down for a meal. We too sit down for a meal. But the meal that they sat down, they sacrificed we don't sacrifice. I hope that's um, I hope that's cleared things up for you. I hope that's cleared things up for you. Amen. Well, Deborah. Please do share your testimony at um, shalom at hoiuk.com. Your testimony of healing and your testimony of no more um, insomnia and God doing tremendous things in your life. Continue to renounce, continue to pray, remove these things from your property. Seek the Holy Spirit and he will guide you and reveal all things to you. Unless there are any other questions, I see a question saying Yeshua. Um, yes, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Yeshua. Um, it looks like we are at the conclusion. Get your shofar. If you have one, get your shofar if you have one, get your noise maker if you have one, we're going to give it a last blast before we conclude our service today. Thank you all for joining me, I hope this has been a blessing unto you. By God's grace, I will see you this upcoming Sabbath. We do not have our Bible study tomorrow. That will be recommencing next week. But if you're not a part of the academy, hoi.ac, um, then I encourage you, join the academy, hoi.ac. I'm back in the UK now. But join the academy, hoi.ac, so that next week when we have, thank you so much for for the gift, um, I appreciate that. 
so that next week if you join the academy you will um, not miss second peter chapter one which will be led by some of the brethren who are a part of the academy uh, or second P yeah second peter chapter one two and three um, that will be commencing from next week please don't forget this ministry um, survives as a result of your giving so we are coming up for first fruits prepare your first fruits um, and you can give that on the website hoi dot hoiuk dot com hoiuk dot com you can go to the sow a seed page and give there if the word has blessed you today i encourage you to give i'm back in the uk yes i'm trying to understand thank you for taking the time to explain it more i just think on us doing sacrifices of obedience to it by upholding to what is asked for thanks again love and prayers for you all right i hope it's ministered to you Love and many blessings. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for joining us for this service today. We hope that you've been blessed and inspired by the message. As we prepare to close this broadcast, we want to share with you the incredible impact your support has made on our ministry. Your tithes and offerings have been instrumental in helping us spread the gospel to the nations, making disciples and training the next generation of ministers page for the academy so if you're new your to generosity ministry, has enabled us to reach out to people from all corners of the world bringing the message of hope healing house and israel. deliverance and the academy, house of israel. your contributions has not only because helped to transform so, lives but also played a vital role in the establishment of ministries worldwide through the process of discipleship The seeds you've sown are bearing fruit, and the impact is far-reaching. We want to encourage you to continue supporting this ministry with your tithes and offerings. Your donations are an investment in God's kingdom, and they enable us to continue the essential work of spreading the gospel of the kingdom, the message of hope, healing and deliverance to the world. So, we invite you to prayerfully consider how you can contribute to this ministry. Your donations, no matter the size, have a significant impact. You can find details on how to give on our website or contact us for more information. Thank you for being a part of our service today. We appreciate your faithfulness and dedication to this ministry. May God bless you abundantly for your generosity.